And one last step before we turn them. I want to blow out the holes. And I want to give it a quick coat of paint. Try to hide the tube, well not the tube, but the fittings. See if I can do this without making a mess all over my hands. like that.
So here's a classic example of directions gone wrong. Usually, PSI directions are fairly accurate and, and self-explanatory. So I'll put this up on the screen. You can freeze the picture and read it in greater detail. It's two-sided. But what they want you to do is drill an 11 32nd hole two and a half inches deep and then they tell you to hold it on the lathe with the bottle stopper chuck. Okay, no problem. Except, oh, it won't go in the hole. Well, okay, I guess you just have to tap out the hole to accept the bottle stopper chuck. That's fine. So I'm fitting this stuff and I also noticed that this doesn't go in the hole. Oh, but it's threaded. So maybe they intended to thread on like you would the bottle stopper. Which is fine, but Required accessories, they don't say anything about a tap of any kind to thread this. They don't say anything anywhere on these directions about threading anything. But, alright, it's not a problem. So, I thread out this one. And it's the right, it's the right tap because I make bottle stoppers. No problem. I can thread it on the chuck. We're good to go. I have to thread down deep enough to accept this full length. But look, different thread. Right size, different thread. So I have inserts that you can also use for bottle stoppers. The inserts naturally fit the bottle stopper threads. And what you drill, do is drill a half inch hole and you epoxy that in. But yeah, it, it wants to go, but it's the wrong thread. So now my options are getting a little more limited. Now I can try to figure out the thread. And I got a thread gauge. I can find the thread on this, find the proper tap, tap that out for this thread, but now it won't fit on the bottle stopper chuck. And again, what really irritates me is nowhere in the directions is any of this mentioned. So I'm just going to cut to the chase. And I'm just going to use a 10 millimeter bit and clearance this thing out, oversize. And I'm just going to epoxy this thing in like I thought we were going to do all along. So, here we go. So now we got a nice, fairly tight clearance fit. And I'll just epoxy that in there. And uh, I'm going to have to mount it differently because now I'm oversized for the stopper chuck. But that's no problem. And I just mounted this project between centers like I did the last one. Um, I've got this center inside the hole in the front. And this is just sticking into the plastic on the back side. I've got to cut a tenon on both sides to accept the fittings. On the one, I've got a smaller tenon and a larger tenon. The other one has two large. And I've got the dimensions for those um, half inch deep. So I also softened up the edges on this on my disc grinder. The last one I did, it uh, fragmented and it cut my hand up in several places. So I softened the edge. I hope that takes a little bit of the shrapnel away. Let's see what we got.
por Shape of the nose Check my measurement, 740 thousandths cutter is exactly 7 sixteenths so I actually have about a sixteenth over I might have to sand down a little bit that's it I think I actually went one, one pass too far on it that's fine I'll fill the gap with epoxy now the back tenon and the both tenons on the other one, the last three I have to do, are all 980 thousandths. to go just a little bit over and have to sand down the end of this just a hair. That way I know I got full support. Ballpark. Oh, I am. I'm glad I checked. I was going to keep going, but I'm getting close right there. actually not perfectly square this way so I'm I'm there at the end but the tips not but I actually need to taper that tip down because I don't need that hanging up so I need to taper it this way anyway so that's probably it right there yep Good enough. It's not a machinist fit. It's close. Close enough that epoxy will fill it. Now for the outside, I don't have any bushings or anything, but I know the meat on these cups, and that's what fits over that. It's not that thick. I'm gonna bring it up on a curve anyway. So I just need to come down close to it, but I need to leave a little bit of a lip.
So when I re-drilled these, I lost the white paint that I'd sprayed down inside. So what I'm going to do now is spray paint that I sprayed into a cup and all over my fingers. I'm just going to use this disposable makeup brush. And just touch up the insides. As best I can. And unfortunately it did not get rid of the rough drill marks. So... They don't have any kind of solution for that. I would say to drill it the next size over, which would be a 10.5 millimeter, but I suspect it would do the same thing. And it would also make the hole that much bigger that I would lose that much more support for what I'm gluing in. So. If it were a product that I was selling, it would be a bigger problem. For what it is though, I'm just gonna have to live with it. I can't get coverage on this one spot. There it goes. That was stubborn. And this third one remained intact. But since I'm here anyway, I might as well just go ahead and apply a little bit more. Make sure I don't have any bare spots. And there we go. Not perfect, but it'll work. I want to go ahead and epoxy these end caps on. If you, um, when you're glue, doing glue ups, this applies across the board in carpentry. Try not to do everything in one big chunk. You try to break it down into little steps. So you don't have to work with too much at once. And you don't have to end up juggling two, three or more pieces that are wet. So I'm just going to do this step first and get these glued on and secure and dried. And then I can work on the other ends. I've just got two part epoxy. I use 30 minutes. And a little drop of white alumalite pigment to color the epoxy. Probably not so important on this step. Actually, I probably should have gone with clear on this step, come to think of it, but too late now. And I think I'm going to secure or secure epoxy the um, caps rather than the other way around so that as I slide it I'm not squeezing the epoxy out rather I'm forcing it down into the top of the cap hopefully but if I do make a mess I have got my alcohol open and a towel on standby so I can grab that real quick and do any cleanup I have to do. Like right there, I just made a little bit of a mess. But hopefully,
and no alcohol, but let's just see if I can't get that blob out of there just with a dry towel. And I'm going to go ahead and clamp it and hope that leather band's not going to get in my way. I don't know what that was. Yeah, I got some squeeze out, which is all right. So what we'll do, just take a little bit of alcohol, and we'll just clean this up. Squeeze out's not a bad thing. Shows that you got a good coverage. Okay. There's one. Move that off camera. And focus on number two. And while this is 30 minute epoxy, I'd Notice that weather and stuff drastically changes that and even at the best of times I don't know that I've ever had it remain viable for a full 30 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> I don't time it but I would venture to say that for the most part you probably got about 15 to 20 minutes tops to get do what you're going to do with this. Just had a power flicker. And make sure we're still recording. We are. But as I was saying, you probably got to help 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Go ahead and wipe the outside of this while I can see it. Okay. We are in the middle of the Christmas blizzard up here in Columbia City, Indiana. We are one of the large number of states that have experienced this one. We didn't get it too bad. We had like two inches of snow. Temperatures are at, I think they were like negative 11 last night. We're at about negative five now. High winds throughout the rest of the day. This is Friday. Friday before Christmas. My biggest hope at this point is that the power stays on through the day. But if not, we got a fire burning in the, in the stove, so we will be all right. Okay, that's that step. It appears this kit does not need any kind of pressing or gluing. So let's get this assembled at this point. First thing I need to do, these are somewhat directional. As I turn them, I have one side's bigger than the other and I want the bigger side to be on the inside. So, like that. I'm not reading the directions. I'm sort of winging it here. So, is that right? Seems to me there's nothing holding that in there, though. Maybe I will be resorting to the directions. In any case, I think this is pretty self-explanatory. This just goes on here like this. The end cap screws on. And then the other one. Line up the stripes. Tighten it down. I 
like I went too far with that. I should go that way. Tighten it down. Yeah, I'm not fully understanding the concept here, but that is that one. Okay, this one I did a little trial fitting ahead of time. You have a trim ring. You actually have three trim rings. And it is up to you on whether you want two in the front, one in the front, two in the back, one each, or what, what you want to do. I am right at my limits on this, though, so I chose to put two on the front. And we should be good. But I think I needed that extra spacer, so I'm glad that that was provided. And in this one, I have plenty of room. So, by rights, we probably should rough up the metal on that. This one is a nice tight fit. It even threads on. But we're just going to fill it up with epoxy on both of these. So, let's go ahead and mix them up. Something I just now thought about, too. I'm not too sure I want to put the back plug in just yet. Because I'm going to have to clamp this with rubber bands. And if I do that, I've got a rounded end. I think I might want to hold off on that. Let's hold off on that. Let's get this front secured first. Come on. I don't want, yeah, see, I don't want a lot coming out. You don't want too much pigment in your epoxy. Just enough to turn it white. Mix it up real good. Lessons I'm learning from filming these things as I'm watching them. Quit saying the word thorough. And I use again a lot too. And again, again. Saving grace so I don't do a lot of the uh, uh. Although I do do a bit of it. Hey, I'm not a paid actor. I have no formal training. Yeah, I'm not going to worry too much about squeeze out on this. I'll clean it all up. I just want to make sure I got plenty of glue in there. I want a nice bond. Oh, see, I already threaded it once. So I guess I loosened it up. So what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to attempt to do here. Yeah. Good, 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 good. Let's just add, let's add another one. Get my finger out of there. That's... Plenty of pressure. It's all you need. I see a little bit of a gap. But my spacers aren't loose. I'm wishing I would have drilled that hole just another even eighth of an inch. Eighth of an inch deeper. We're good though. As long as that epoxy bond's good, it'll be all right. But yeah, I'm gonna have to wait to put this in because obviously I needed the place to clamp on it. So stand by.
time for the next round. We're going to finish this project up with this round. We're going to take care of these last three pieces. And set everything aside to dry. So I don't want to go overboard, but I want to make sure I have enough epoxy for all of this. I wish we had better control on these ink bottles, pigment bottles. It's like the squeezable mustard bottles. You squeeze and you squeeze and nothing comes out and then all of a sudden it all comes in a rush. To mix it, what's that word? Thoroughly, thorough enough. Uh, I'm gonna go the other way with this. I want to insert it in the hole, and hopefully, it'll run downhill. Since this is just a plug. It doesn't require a lot of strength. Get that little streamer off of there. And it's just a press fit. I probably don't need to do anything at this point. It's staying in. Somehow it bled all the air out. Clean this epoxy out. I got some squeeze out I need to clean. Yeah. I think we're good. I think we're good. I'm actually going to move to the side, work the other two, and I'll keep my eye on it and come back to it. And we'll see if it stays in. I think it's going to stay in at this point. So the next one. And again, I think I'm just going to fill a hole. It's probably the best. method here. Now I do have that cap goes over it too. So I don't mind if I get a little up in here to hold it on. I don't think I'm going to do the edge though. I think we're going to be good with just that. Decide what I want on top. I think I want this section on top. Once again, I think we're going to have the um, compression thing going on. Maybe not. And I will show you when I'm done how I'm going to hold these. I'm just going to let the weight of the handle itself apply pressure on that. Okay, last one. This big guy. Yeah, 30 minute epoxy and it's already starting to set. I probably got about five more minutes on that. 
So I don't know how long I've been going here. But it goes back to what I was saying earlier. I don't think it's a full 30-minute work time. I don't think I've ever had a full 30-minute work time. Okay. No squeeze out, no mess to clean up. I got a little bit there. I got picked up from somewhere. All right, and let me put this in the clamp off of the camera. Clean this up. Get this out of the way. And then I'll just move these back and show you basically what I'm doing. Is that showing up? Kind of. You can sort of see what I'm doing anyway to hold it. Let's flip this one this way. And I'm just going to let the weight, weight of the handles hold that in place. All right, we'll be back with the wrap up. Thank you. 